Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you how to create quick and easy macro controls in Logic using the Scripter MIDI effects plugin. So a macro control is when you control parameters of multiple effects plugins with a single knob or fader on your MIDI controller. So I've got like a synth pattern here in the step sequencer and it sounds like this. By the way, this trick will work for most third-party instruments, most third-party effects, as well as any of Logic's built-in instruments and effects. So I've got the ES2, I've got an EQ here that I'm gonna use a low pass filter here on. So I'm just gonna be controlling the frequency, the cutoff frequency of the filter here. And I've got just a little bit of a resonant peak on it just to give it some character. I've also got this delay effect, the tape delay effect at a quarter note. You can affect the amount of the delay you hear with the wet signal here, the wet slider. I've got the ROM reverb from Native Instruments. It's a really cool, airy, ethereal reverb. We're gonna add this with the mix knob. And then within the ES2, I want to control the analog knob. I want to control the drive knob in the filter just to give this a bit of saturation. And then I also want to be able to control the intensity of the phaser. So how many controls is that? The filter is one, the delay is two, the reverb is three, analog is four, drive is five, and then intensity of the phaser is six. So I need to be able to control six parameters, and I wanna do this with a single knob or fader on my MIDI controller. So the first thing you do is on the channel strip for the instrument, go to your MIDI effects here, click on this and go down to Scripter. This is a MIDI effects plugin that allows you to type in JavaScript and you can actually create your own scripts. Uh, we will be editing one of the pre-made scripts. So I'm gonna click up here in factory default and I'm going to load up a script called MIDI to plugin parameters. Now, essentially what this does is it allows you to pair up to four different targets with a MIDI controller of some kind. By default, it's set to the modulation wheel, but you can actually learn this to any knob or fader on your MIDI controller. So let's do that first. I'll just click learn MIDI input and then I'm just going to move any knob or fader on my MIDI controller. And you can see there it's learned controller number 27, which was one of the knobs on my MIDI controller. So you just move that knob and it'll automatically learn it. Now we need to select our targets. So our targets are those six things I was talking about earlier. So for target one, I'll select learn plugin parameter. I'll just select the cutoff frequency of the filter, the high cut or low pass filter. Now you can set a range for this. So if this is set from zero to 100%, and I move that knob, you'll see that it has quite a large range. I don't want the entire frequency spectrum to be able to be sweeped like this. I want it sort of like in this area. So I'm gonna set a minimum level. There we go. Maybe down to like 1K-ish. That's fine, just like that. And I'll set a high range. There we go. So you're just limiting the range that that controller works within. So now I can choose another target. So I'll choose target two, learn plugin parameter. Select the wet knob here. It learns it. And the same thing applies. I don't want 100% wet on my tape delay. I might want maybe 60% to be the highest value. So I'm gonna set the max to around 60%. And now if I move my knob on my MIDI controller, you'll see that it's controlling both of those parameters. So we've created a macro control. Next, I'll go to target three, learn plugin parameter, click on the mix blend in ROM. Again, I don't want this to be 100%, but I do want it to be pretty high. And I always want a little bit of reverb in, so I'll pull up the minimum value. Let's see how that works. So we're going from 12% to 72%. That works for me. Okay, next up, I wanna learn the analog knob in the ES2. So I'll click Learn Plugin Parameter, click on the analog knob. Again, set sort of a range for it. And now I'm controlling all four parameters at once. Now notice they're all, all going in the same direction. If one goes down, they all go down. If one goes up, they all go up. You can actually control this by inverting the depth of the target. For example, if I wanted the filter to go down while everything else goes up, 
I could simply set the max range to a range that's lower than the minimum. And now you'll see when I move my knob down, the other three controls move down, but the filter moves up. So it's totally possible to invert these controls. Although for the filter, I don't necessarily want that. So I'll set that back to where I had it before. So now you'll see that we've run out of controls. You only get four targets. This is where we need to go into the script editor and we need to alter the JavaScript in a very simple way to create more parameters. So I'll just click open script and editor. This brings you to the script editor here. And toward the top, you'll see this thing under globals, under settings, it says total targets four. All we have to do is define how many parameters or how many targets that we want. So I'll say six. So I'll change this from four to six, and then just click run script and it runs the script. And you can see I can scroll down now and I have target five and target six. I'm not exactly sure what the limit is, but I don't think you'll run out. I think it's probably 128 if it's a MIDI value. Most of the time I'm not using more than four targets anyway, but this is a way that you can add additional targets. So let's learn another plugin parameter. Let's learn the drive knob. And this one is one that I want to be inverted. I want more drive when the signal is filtered and dry. So now when I move my knob up, the drive goes down, move my knob down, the drive goes up. And then the very last one, learn plugin parameter, is the intensity of the phaser. I always want a little bit of phaser. Let's try that out. So I'm just gonna press play and then play around with the knob on my MIDI controller. And you can see how this affects the signal. Now, once you've created your macro controls here, you can just close all of these out. They don't have to be open. And you can write in these parameters as automation. Now, there's two ways that you can write in this automation. The first way, if you're using the step sequencer like me, you can click here and then go down to learn and then move the knob or fader that you used for the macro control. And it'll actually learn its own row here just for that knob or fader. So I'll turn off learn mode. I can click here and you'll see there's two controls, automation value and then step on or off. So in order for the effect to work for each step, you have to turn on the effect for each one of these steps. Then what you can do is you can draw in an automation value between zero and 127 and this acts a lot like automation would out in the tracks area. So one of the cool things about using automation or using automation rows in the step sequencer is you can easily jump back and forth between open and closed values. Whereas with automation, it's a little more complex to do something. So I can do things like this where I'm jumping up to the max value on certain notes. So that's one way to do it. Although I find myself typically not using the step sequencer for automation. A better way to do this in my opinion is just to convert your pattern region into a MIDI region. And then all you have to do, because this is a, a MIDI controller control, not an individual plugin parameter control, you don't have to use your standard live automation modes. All you have to do is press R to record and you can record the automation either into this region or right on top of it. I like to set the drag mode to no overlap. And what that'll do is it'll automatically write the controller automation into the MIDI region. So let me just press Command R a couple times to repeat this. Press J to join these. Then I'll just press R to record and move the control on my MIDI controller.
And then when I stop, you'll see all of that controller automation written directly into the MIDI region. And you can still manually edit this. If you double click, open it up in the piano roll editor, click here, and then go down to the parameter, you'll see control number 27. You'll see the automation for that control and you can edit it manually, or you could just draw it in manually just using the pencil tool. If you don't feel like using a knob or fader to write this in in real time, you just draw it in just like so with the pencil tool. And again, if I go back to each of these plugins now, you'll see that they follow the automation that I drew in. So that's how you can use the Scripter plugin in Logic Pro to create easy macro controls for cool synthesis and sound design ideas. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.